Imagine one of your ups pulling up, wetting up your block, and you get popped. I just can't do it. So sometimes a fu oh, oh crap! Y'all caught me in the middle of my nightly sing along. I'm I'm so embarrassed. Y'all heard my voice. <laughs> Anyways, what is crack lacking? It is Scott from Semi Pro here, aka Damn Peggy, aka Jimmy McNulty's flask of Jameson. And I promise one day, one of my viewers, just one, will get one of my references. I'm really holding out hope there. But anyways, today we are talking about the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens were somewhat of a surprise team in the NFL last season. Sure, a lot of people thought they'd be good, but I don't know if anyone really thought they'd be as good as they actually were. Lamar Jackson went on an absolute tear and was bar none the most exciting player in the NFL. They brought back that beautiful run for scheme and I loved it when the Ravens were on in primetime because they were just a really fun team to watch. But I do have to say, as I look at this roster in 2020 and look at the history of the NFL, I feel like this team could be on a bit of a decline. Now Ravens fans, before you go rushing to the dislike button or the comments section, hear me out here. I actually really like this team a lot, and my first video project I ever did when I was first learning how to edit was a Lamar Jackson documentary, so I have no animosity towards this team at all. The first thing I have to start with though is the playstyle. This Baltimore offense was versatile, but with the complex backfields and designed QB runs, it was a bit gimmicky. Nothing wrong with that, but gimmicks in the NFL have a history of phasing out quickly, just to name a couple of the recent ones from this past decade, the read option and RPOs. Granted, both of these are still around, but they aren't the same forces that they were when first introduced. I worry that Baltimore's offense was another gimmick that will phase out. I think we saw the beginning of this in their playoff game versus the Titans. I know this point gets exhausted, but it is true that the Titans were able to handle Lamar better than anyone with a simple QB spy type of arrangement. Now this doesn't mean that the Ravens offense is going to be shit. They will just have to adapt. The NFL has the film of what they want to do now and defenses are much more savvy to it and NFL defenses are really, really smart. If they want to keep this success with Lamar going, they are going to have to find a way to change it up in order to keep defenses off guard. They don't have the skill players at the receiver position to just do whatever they want and keep writing the same system from last year. Their ability to adapt is going to determine if they can be a dominant force again like they were in 2019. I just worry that this won't happen. It is hard to say, let's change everything, when you had one of the best offenses in the entire NFL last season, and almost nobody could stop your QB. That's why I think they have a bit of a drop off this year, just for being stubborn. But I can't blame them, and also, Lamar is so damn good that defenses may just not be able to stop him no matter what, and the Titans game might have just been an anomaly. Lamar is the fixture in this offense, obviously. As long as he's healthy, he's the guy, and the offense will revolve around his abilities. When he's healthy, he's going to get his no matter what. Even if the offense drops off a little bit, Lamar is always a deadly weapon. He is joined in the backfield by a crazy group that fits him perfectly. Mark Ingram is a very trustworthy guy who can do it all, and although he may be nearing the end of his productive years, he should be the number one option for Lamar to hand it off to this season. He will be joined by rookie J.K. Dobbins, who will not only be a solid runner out of the gate, but can also open up a whole new avenue of backfield passes and schemes with his pass catching ability. Gus Edwards is also back there as that third guy as a very productive downhill back. With Lamar back there though, he might just be the best running back on this team. The running game is awesome, and they just have to figure out an adjustment to the scheme. The wide receiver position is a group that I am a bit skeptical about. I really really like Hollywood Brown, but I just don't know yet if he should be that guy handling the load of a number one option. I like him more as a number two burner right now who can operate the edge and occasionally move into the slot, and I just think he is better in that capacity at this point in his career, but he is very young and has the potential to develop further. He also said that he wasn't even at full speed last season 
due to injury, which is frankly quite scary to think about. He is joined by Willie Sneed and Miles Boykin. This is by no means a bad group, but it just really isn't deep at all, and I think they will have to open up the passing game a bit more, which could expose some of their flaws. A lot of fans pegged this as an area of need, but the team chose not to really address it. A couple hints for Coach Harbaugh. Number one, play DeAnthony Thomas, the guy can move, and number two, give Antonio Brown a chance. It is a low risk, high reward situation. Mark Andrews is also a guy who you can't forget about in this offense either, as he fits in very well at the tight end position and might actually be the number one passing option. This offensive line is not in shambles by any means, but it is going to take a hit with Yonda retiring. It is looking like DJ Fluker is going to fill that spot, but no one will be able to do what Yonda did. That will be a huge loss for this team. This is still a good to decent O-line, but don't underestimate how much the retirement of such a great player and fixture will hurt them. So overall, this isn't the most talented offense ever, but as long as they are running the offense that they like to run the way they want to run it, these guys for the most part fit the scheme very, very well and they proved last year what they can do. Again, the scheme is just my worry for this team in 2020. The defensive side of the ball for the Ravens is going to remain largely the same as last season and it was great then. They actually improved on the D-line a bit, bringing in Campbell and Brockers. As a whole, expect great stability and consistency out of this defense. I don't have nearly as many questions about them as I do the offense. The one group that is a bit thin is the inside linebacking core. LJ Fort and Chris Board are the two main guys, and there just isn't much experience there at all. Patrick Queen will also join this group after being drafted by the Ravens this season. He's a good prospect and I like him, but you never know what you're going to get out of a rookie, especially when they are starting, and we will see what his role ends up being. But besides that group, I absolutely love this defense for the Ravens, and there are proven veterans all over the field. Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, and Earl Thomas are all guys who are amongst the best at their positions and provide a lot of stability. In my opinion, if the Ravens are going to return to 2019 form, it starts with this defense keeping them afloat. So will this team drop off a bit? I think offensively, yeah. That said, if they adjust their system, they could be in business. But if things stay the same, I see it becoming stagnant and played out really quick. Regardless, there is a lot of talent here to work with, and I do not see this team as a 14 win team again, but I do see them in that 10 to 13 range. Still really good and the potential to be one of the best in the league, but I don't think they're that same juggernaut offensively. It all starts with the evolution of their offensive scheme, and I am excited to see what Lamar has in store for 2020. If you made it this far in the video and you enjoyed it, go ahead and click that thumbs up button, it really does help us out a lot, and if you are new to the channel, click that subscribe button, you will not regret it, and we post really dope daily sports content, MLB, NBA, NFL, college sports, anything sports related you want, we've got here. Thank you for watching and have a blessed rest of your day. Psst, if you're still listening, you know the drill. Dak Prescott comments in the comment section right now. Confuse the hell out of everybody talking about how Dak is the GOAT and the best QB in the league.